Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and today I wanted to um, put together an updated version of my card of the year reading technique. Um, now I published a couple of videos about this last year um, around this time in late 2021 um, and you can go back in my list of videos to see those. Um, in terms of the prompts they haven't really changed but what has changed is my thinking about how we select a card of the year and some reasons why I'm changing my method for doing it for myself and for the people that I'm going to be reading for this season. Um, so I was, I've been struggling with this overall concept of tarot and astrology married together. Um, now I realize I may be an outlier um, in our community about uh, the fact that I don't like to use these two tools together. I think that um, it's actually a little bit weird to put a prescriptive system such as astrology where we know the movements of all of the planetary bodies ahead of time and we can predict you know thousands of years into the future what these um, what the astrology uh, charts are going to look like and then um, to marry that with a random system a randomizing system like tarot um, has never made sense to me personally, and I'm not saying it's wrong, obviously. There's no school of tarot. There's no one right way or wrong way to do it, but it's never really made sense to me. And I have further thoughts that I don't want to derail this conversation into, so I'll probably make a separate video about tarot and astrology um, and other kind of uh, Neoplatonist um, systems of, of working with uh, divination tools and so forth. So I'm going to take that and kind of set it aside. Um, but what I will say is that I'm, I'm not sure that the card of the year in terms of calculating it on your birthday is um, something that I'm comfortable with anymore. And part of the reason is the way that math works. Um, so the, the way that you would typically calcula calculate the card of the year is that you would take the next year that you're uh, reading for, in this case, 2023, and you would add the month and the day of your birth to that. And you would come up with a number. Um, so for me, it's actually strength next year. Um, and last year I did a reading. Uh, it was the chariot. And that reading was very useful. And um, it was very on point for a lot of the different aspects of my life, my personal life, my development, and my spiritual path, um, my work, and so forth. So I'm not saying that's bad or wrong. But it occurred to me that there are a couple of weird things about this calculating method of doing a card of the year reading. One is that we're calculating the the card of the year at all. Um, again, if tarot is a random system, and if we allow it to be random by shuffling the cards and drawing them um, in other kinds of readings, in other kinds of spreads, why aren't we doing that in the card of the year? Why aren't we trusting in the um, the randomness factor to bring up the card that is going to be best suited for us for that year. Um, it seems like we're throwing away uh, kind of Tarot's valuable aspect of, of including that chance. Um, and, you know, people have different perspectives on exactly what how Tarot works and, and why it's not really random. Um, but for me, it has to do with the concept of synchronicity when you do a Tarot reading. Um, your tarot reading comes out, you get the cards that you get based on the question that you asked because, um, you know, there's this synchronicity between what's going on with your question and what's going on in the broader universe. That's kind of how I see it, right? Um, so allowing that, that, I think that's a strength in tarot because it brings up things that you wouldn't have thought of. Um, and it's not all preordained and predestined um, ahead of time. It can't really be calculated ahead of time, right? But, that's that's a good thing. So um, so that and the other thing about the card of the year, if you calculate it, is that you always go in order of the majors, right? I was chariot last year. I'd be strength this year, and then the next year I'm going to be hermit energy. Um, and I just don't, you know, I've I'm in my mid forties now, so I have some decades of experience being an adult, and I haven't noticed, you know, thinking back, and I've been thinking about this a lot, um, that my uh, life really reflects this kind of linear um, progression through the majors in that way. Um, you know, you might you might have a chariot year, you might have a, a tower year the next year, something, you know, really disruptive happens. 
Um, you might have a, a magician year the next year where you're learning a new skill um, that really you know plays out in, in different ways in your life. So I, I think that it is more likely that we experience our lives in a non-linear way. They talk about you know healing and growth as non-linear, and I think I think that applies to all areas of our life. Our are non-linear. It's not that we don't get progressively better, you know, with with practice um, at whatever it is, whether it's uh, playing a musical instrument or getting more proficient in our job, um, or you know, learning another new skill, learning to be a better tarot reader. You know, you do make forward progress in those things if you spend time on them, but that doesn't mean that the the energy and the um, the kind of overall landscape ahead of you is also linear. Um, I think life is more likely to throw you more of a curveball than that. So I think for those two reasons, um, and also the fact that you can't, you can never draw a magician, a high priestess, or an empress card as your card of the year. Um, when you calculate your life path number or your birth card number, you can. Um, you can get those numbers because you get a reflection of a higher number that reduces down to those. But you can never draw a card of the year that is less than um, 22 that, that reduces down to one, really. You can draw, you can draw let's say, your, um, you know, you, cal you calculate your card of the year and the, and the math comes out to 10. Well, that's the wheel. And yes, you can say, okay, the wheel plus the magician. But you, I want one card of the year, really. Um, I, I don't want like pairs of cards or multiple cards or things like that. So um, that's another reason why I want this to be just a random draw and something where I can sit, you know, I can sit and ask a question, which is, what is my card of the year for 2023? What is... Um, you know, what's what's going to be the biggest influence in my life this year or what kind of major arcana energy is going to be most present for me? You know, you can phrase that question however you want. Um, but something along those lines, that's I want to ask the tarot question and I want to draw a card. So that's really the change that I'm making. And I'm going to be blending that um, when I read for others. I'm going to be blending that with their own birth card and also the card of the year of the year, um, the, <laughs> the global card of the year, if you will. So in 2023, you, you would add up two plus two plus three, you get seven. So we're all going to have a chariot year next year. Um, that's going to be the prevailing energy or the, the underlying thread or, or whatever you want to call it, the collective uh, card of the year. Um, so I think really looking at a blend between your personal card of the year, which you would draw based on a question, uh, maybe your birth year, especially if you've never kind of calculated that or thought about it, you can think about, okay, you know, who am I um, based on astrology? What's my kind of uh, default mode or core um, aspect of my personality or something like that? And then um, what is this collective card of the year that we're all going to be experiencing together? And I think a blend of those could give you, you know, better information, a more interesting reading, um, than just saying like, oh, you were this this year, this last year, and now you're going to be this other thing, and it's just going to go through this, some sequence. It's also kind of boring, you know. Um, so I don't know. I would love to hear you, especially if you've been doing card of the year readings for a long time. I've only done one for 2022, so I don't um, have a lot to compare it with. Um, but if you've been doing it, you know, have you seen it like over the last five years go from you know, high priestess and empress and emperor and, and hierophant, has that really resonated with you? Or do you do you get through some sort of sequence and go, you know, how can I possibly be, be having an emperor year this year? I'm, I'm not going to be stable. I'm not going to be, um, you know, steady. I, I'm, I'm going to be changing jobs and getting married and moving across the country, you know. Um, so so that's kind of what I'm, I'm curious about is whether you've felt that in your own experience if you do card of the year readings regularly. Um, I do want to demonstrate um, kind of this new concept that I've been talking about. So that's what we're going to do next and go on the table and just do some hypothetical readings. I'm not going to um, read for myself right now um, or anyone else, uh, but I will, I will kind of give you some hypotheticals and look at it that way. So let's go down and look at some cards.
All right, so to do this reading, we're going to need three decks. Um, two of them could be majors only, if you have majors only decks. Um, but we're going to need at least uh, two full sets of the majors plus an additional full tarot deck. So right now I am working with the Maraloon tarot. That's these three cards here. And then I have the Fifth Spirit tarot, just because I love the majors in this deck, um, for our second deck. And then I have a third one off to the side here that I'll pull from when we get to our prompts. So um, in this example, what we're going to do is lay out the person's birth cards um, and life path card if they if they are different. Um, we're going to look at the card of the year for 2023 for everybody, the collective energy. And then we're going to have them draw the random card for their personal card of the year. So in this example, I have someone whose birthday uh, reduces down to the number 20. So that would be their birth card, would be judgment. Um, that judgment card further reduces to two. So your life path card is any number from one to nine. And that is number two, the high priestess. So these top two cards are really about them as a person. Um, and then for everybody in 2023, two plus two plus three equals seven, everyone gets the chariot card for next year as like an underlying this is the year's energy so you can talk about how those three blend together and then you would have them from another deck pick um a a card of the year um and the way that i like to do that is to just fan all 22 cards out not in order i shuffle them first fan them out and have them select a card so that becomes really their their card of 2023 and then from there, you can read these four together, and that by itself gives you a fairly rich reading, I think. Um, you can talk about how their person, what they bring to the table, and their kind of default personality or, you know, standard ways of operating or preferences um, play, uh, play well or not, or might be in conflict with um, this chariot energy of 2023 or whatever year you're reading for, um, and then the card that, that they drew. Um, and how that personal card for this particular year comes into play. And so what can you say about strength in combination with these three? I think right there you have a nice reading, um, kind of a reading within a reading. But I do like the prompts that I came up with last year for this card of the year reading. So I think those can be added on. And for that, again, you're gonna need a full 78 card deck. Now, my quandary with that is do I have the majors from my my third deck? Um, this is the Inspired Soul Tarot by Julie of Peekaboo Rose. And I was thinking about setting aside the majors from this deck and making sure that I picked out any that came up here so that the answer to the four prompts is not another of these cards. For example, um, how do I apply the energy of this card I'm about to draw to this reading. Well, if you got the High Priestess Judgment, Chariot, or Strength as the answer to that, it might be a little bit bizarre, um, but I'm kind of wondering if that's really gonna happen or not. So we'll see. Um, I'm about to do a bunch of these readings for, for friends and I'm also uh, working in a shop. So we'll see if that happens. Um, I'll need to have a game plan for if that does happen. And you can let me know too um, what your experience uh, is if you decide to do this or, or try it out. Um, one thing I like to do with uh, new spreads when I'm just learning them and playing around is to pick like a literary character or a fictional person or maybe even a famous person um, and do a reading around them as practice. So, you know, it's somebody that you know some characteristics about. You can kind of check yourself and see if this makes sense in, in context of what you know about this fictional person. And then um, just kind of practice with them. And that's that way it's not so high stakes. You're not doing these like readings for yourself or um, for paid clients and, and practicing on them. So, um, so yeah, so that's, this is where the third deck comes in and this is where my quandary about repeating cards comes in. So if you have thoughts about that, um, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you would do. Um, so let's just go ahead and choose our four cards and then we can kind of walk through this reading together. All right, so the first prompt is what aspect of this card of the year, and particularly the random card that they're gonna be drawing for themselves, what aspect is the most important? And here we get the 10 of cups. The second prompt is how to apply this energy. So how to apply the strength um, energy into the rest of their life and incorporate it with the rest of what's going on here. What obstacles likely to come up for them? And here we get four, the emperor. And then um, 
what advice is there to face this challenge? And we get the hanged man, or the hanged one in this case, um, number 12. I forgot to mention, but the two of buttons would correspond with the two of pentacles or the two of coins in this deck. So this is a really cool looking reading and I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Um, I have to do it this way uh, so that I can pick up all the cards on my camera, but I, I kind of like this layout actually. I was thinking about putting these four in a row across the middle and then having the other ones around, but I'm sort of enjoying this. So I might lay it out this way actually when I do it. All right, so let's stop and think for a second about this reading and see if we can walk through this. Um, to keep this relatively brief and to the point, I'm just going to focus on the strength card here. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of explanation with this um, at this demonstration, but I would probably pull in things from these three cards as well into this reading because um, sort of, you know, how we think of ourselves in the world is important whenever we're thinking about planning for the future or what's coming up. And then also kind of the overarching energy of what the year is can can influence us. So I would probably focus on these two cards um, a little bit more. So the answer to the uh, what aspect of this um, strength year um, is the most important. And we get the Ten of Cups. And um, we think about tens as finality, or at least I do. I read sort of numerologically. Um, and this could be also an abundance card. Um, this could be about you know, achieving something, finishing up something important and and meeting some kind of emotional goal or something that means a lot to you that you're very emotionally invested in. So um, in order to do that, uh, perhaps you can draw on strength or strength will, will get you to this point. So this could be an example where someone is finishing up a big project or they're finishing up a degree program or something like that. They're retiring from their job. You know, they want to celebrate. Um, and that that is the thing that they can kind of concentrate on. Or maybe they're thinking about finishing something or thinking about retirement. Um, and that, you know, that is a big change and they kind of need to look for their inner strength to accomplish that um, if this is a goal kind of card. Um, next, we have how to apply this energy. So how to apply the energy of, of strength in, across our lives. And I would say it's to some extent the, the chariot card as well. Um, so this is like forward movement and then and then into kind of a more steady holding your ground kind of energy. Um, and the two of coins um, looks at balancing uh, things. You know, that's a classic kind of keyword. Um, here we have uh, two elements that are kind of crossed um, against each other. Um, so they're kind of providing support for one another. So here I'm getting a lot of stability, right? We have a lot of even numbers here. Um, actually, the only odd number is our chariot card from uh, the reading, the, the card of the year for 2023. Everything else is an even number. So everything's feeling very stable, very steady uh, with this reading. And so how to apply the energy is to, to weigh your options and to keep things in alignment. Um, and then what obstacle is likely to occur um, is also in that steadiness and stability. It's the Emperor card. And we think about the Emperor as being that stable force, but can also be kind of stuck and stodgy. So balancing things out, working through your goals and, you know, doing the things that will bring you to a sense of emotional fulfillment or emotional closure, um, but and not getting stuck, not getting stuck along the way, not getting stuck in the process, um, but carrying that forward, um, capturing that 2023 energy and being able to move forward. Um, you know, self-doubt can creep in, um, negative self-talk can creep in, being too judgmental of your of yourself and of your project uh, progress can come in. And then the advice to face the challenge. Um, so if this is the obstacle, um, which is about, you know, maybe um, being too conservative or something like that, is the hanged one. And I see that as, in this reading as looking at things from a different perspective. So using your ability to kind of stand back from when you're in it, when you're in the details, and to look at the big picture and to draw on um, the, the positive aspects of strength, which are about support 
um, rather than a, a very limiting kind of a structure that's imposed onto something. So think about supporting uh, yourself rather than um, judging yourself or putting a lot of demands on yourself or allowing others to do that for you. So um, this was, I felt like a little bit of rambly reading, but you kind of get the gist of how these four questions tie in with the cards in the middle. And I'll have to um, practice this a little bit more, but that's kind of what I wanted to present to you was doing a, a reading around the card of the year that's anchored by the person's individual Ness, they're, you know, it's based on their birth date, it's based on their astrology, um, if you extrapolate it out through numerology, um, but also validates the fact that there is a assigned card of the year already for 2023, and allows that random factor that, again, is Tarot's strength, um, or you could, if you don't like the word random, um, the personal factor, that they get to actually physically choose a card for themselves for the next year. Um, I like that blend a lot. And I think it still works with the four prompts that I, you know, developed with this reading. Um, I would love to hear if you try this out. I would love to either see your demonstration reading or you can tag me on Instagram at Water Child Tarot if you take a picture and do a description. Um, or if you just want to leave a comment below and, you know, tell me, tell me how your reading went. I would love to hear more. And again, I'll be talking more about tarot and astrology in a longer video, but uh, until then, take care. I hope you all have a wonderful 2023 and I will see you again soon. Bye.